if you are not overclocking your RAM, you're missing out on so much. Like when I was running my RAM at 2400 MHz, it was a 35,024 megabits per second reads. And after an overclock, this code jumped up to 45,703 megabits per second. Also, who doesn't love free upgrades? Overclocking is a tech equivalent of drag racing, and overclocking a RAM is the easiest among everything. The difference in performance is just so much that I had to make this video. The test matches I will use includes the ASRock B450 Steel Legend motherboard along with the Ryzen 5 3600 processor. The Steel Legend is known to be notorious in terms of overclocking potential, but we will have a look for ourselves. The memory kit that we will use includes the ADATA XPG Spectre XD40, which is clocked at 2400MHz at CL17. Hold on, I know those aren't great, but the results may amaze you. Take this as a memory OC tutorial come B450 Steel Legend memory OC review, because I'll be showing you all the required steps. First, make sure that your hardware supports overclocking. All AMD Ryzen processors are unlocked, which means all of them can be overclocked, but that is not the case with Intel. Intel's F series of processors are generally locked, and their K series of processors are generally unlocked. But don't hesitate to make a quick Google search with the name of your processors and search out whether it supports overclocking or not. Cool, now you need a good motherboard to handle the overclock. If you just pick up a cheap arts motherboard from your nearby store, most of the times it might not even handle the overclock system and it will just keep crashing and you definitely don't want that to happen. Whenever you go out to buy a new motherboard, just make sure it has at least the B450 or the B550 chipset and the high-end X470 or the X570 for AMD processors. And for Intel, make sure it is at least a B560, B460 and B365 did not support overclocking, so don't buy them at all. You can also get the beautiful Z490 or the Z590 boards if you want to go extreme overclocking. Now make this clear, these 7 chipsets are not the only ones that support overclocking. There may be lots of older chips that can still overclock like a charm. And there will be better future chipsets that will overclock like a charm, depending on when you are watching this video. So if you don't live in 2021, Google is a friend buddy. And when it comes to choosing your RAM, there are 3 things that you should keep in mind. First of all, pay attention to the heatsink design. Overclocking generates a lot of heat, and you need good heatsinks to dissipate all of those heat because thermal throttling is a thing and you would definitely not want that to happen. So don't go out there and buy some cheap heatsink less RAM modules. Well, most of the times those cheap guys won't even overclock. Secondly, you should pay attention to what are the specs of the RAM on the chip. Well, in 2021, you should get at least a 3600MHz kit. You can always go for 4000 or higher because with DDR5 knocking at the door, your overclock must be at par with DDR5's speeds. Also make sure to pay attention to these case latency or CL as many people would call it. You should get some CL16 kits in 2021 and that way you can always overclock them down to CL14 which is pretty sweet. Thirdly, you should make some research and find what kind of die your RAM sports. If you already have bought the RAM 6, download the Typhoon Burner software, links will be in the description. After you install and launch it, head over to EPROM and read SPD. And under die density slash count, you can find which die your RAM sports. For me, it is from Hynix and it's Hynix's M die. Hynix M die is pretty old, very old actually. It was launched all the way back in 2014 and has already been discontinued. M die was replaced with Hynix's C die. Alright, no history classes now. In 2021, well at least until DDR4 last, Samsung B die and Hynix DJR are the best. Hynix CJR will be pretty close, but DJR can overvolt and tighten down timings better. Then in terms of performance, B die blows with Hynix's DJR and their last DDR4 revision Hynix CJR. Then you have Samsung's E die, which is followed by Hynix AFR, then Samsung's D die, then Hynix's MFR, and finally Samsung's S die. If you want to keep all of the geek stuff out of the way, just remember you should get a Samsung B die or a Hynix DJR or a CJR. Micron is mysterious, as Bill Zoid stated. 
but their E-Die works like a charm, almost as good as Samsung's B-Die. With the former reaching a latency of 53.2 nanoseconds at 40 to 66 megahertz, with B-Die's best at 40 to 66 megahertz being 51 nanoseconds. Micron's Rev N and Rev E follow their E-Die. That's all you need to know about buying a RAM module. Still remember, there is something called the silicon lottery and some modules will naturally clock faster than the others. And you have no control over that. Alright, we need some software to test the stability after applying an overclock, right? Linpack Extreme is hands down the best memory stability test and benchmark software. There are other options like Memtest for example, but for the sake of this video, we will use Linpack. IDA64 is also hailed as good software, and although IDA64 is good for system stability tests, its memory benchmark is flawed. IDA just doesn't take TRRD and T4 timings into consideration. Those timings prevent your DDR4 memory module from overheating due to excessive power consumption. So it might pass a system with bad TRRD and T4 timings. And although you may think my system is all good with this overclock, it might become an issue in the future. We will make simultaneous runs in both Linpack and IDA, so the situation will become clear to you. Okay, just for safety precautions, you should know how to short the CMOS circuit. Most, or better, all modern motherboards have a 2-pin clear CMOS header. Hit the PSU switch off and kill the power to your PC. You need a jumper and connect the 2 pins for around 30 seconds. You can use any metal tool as the jumper, just make sure that you aren't in contact with the metal surface and you are well grounded. What does it do, Orko? Well, simply, it just resets your preferred BIOS settings. Well, that means if a certain overclock setting is causing your PC to not boot at all, this will save the day. If this doesn't work, you might have to reseat your CMOS battery. And although the chances of clear CMOS not working is extremely low, but it might just happen. Opening the CMOS battery is pretty easy. Just hold the chrome tab with the finger and out pops the battery. Keep it out for around 5 minutes, then just reset it. You can even boot without a CMOS battery if you're really having a bad time. Okay, this video won't be responsible for any damage that might cause to you or your hardware because of overclocking. Although damage caused by overclocking is pretty rare, it is a thing. But if you stay within safe limits, there will be no damage caused to your hardware. Make sure you're running the latest BIOS version for your motherboard and after you've got everything ready, go and dog. Get into your BIOS and for Astroc, we need to head over to the OC tweaker section and then to the DRAM information part. The first thing that we will do is enable XMP for both the sticks. And for some weird reason, both the XMP profiles are identical. Anyways, we will go for profile 2. It always has some advanced settings that pushes the timings to squeeze more performance out of the sticks. And boom! We just overclocked from 2400MHz at CL17 to 2400MHz at CL16. Save changes and exit and just make sure you can boot into Windows. You can always run a system stability test, but XMP settings are factory tested to run the best on your given RAM module, so it will be all stable. Still, we made a run of Linpack, 44 loops, and it is an all pass. Linpack's performance, or the G flops, are at 203.9, and IDA's benchmark read is at 3.5 Gbps and write is at 1.92 Gbps, latency at 90.8 nanoseconds. Alright, back to the BIOS, now it is time to start overclocking our RAM sticks. DRAM frequency is pretty much what it means. It is AMP PFC RAM is currently running at for DDR RAM. People will say mega transfers per second or mega hertz, but those are just bad units. Mega transfers per second is such a generic unit for RAM frequencies. And frequency is only half of what your RAM is running at. That is why you will see CPU-Z only reporting half the frequency you set your RAM at. We will start by slowly increasing the frequency of the RAM. Remember to go up by small offsets and always check the system stability. We cannot have an unstable system. Increase the voltage if your system isn't stable enough and then rerun the stability test. Also loosen the timings if you can't boot with a high frequency. The primary timings are all that you need to worry about. You don't need to think about the secondary timings. These can be pretty overwhelming for the first time overclocker and you don't really need to think about all of these. Alright, 2666MHz at CL16 
and the system is rock stable. Just a bit of an update here, we have officially reached 3000 MHz at CL16. I didn't have to touch the timings yet. Let's run Linpack and IDA benchmarks now. Alright, 32 loops of Linpack at 8GB, we get a performance of 206.5 GFLOPs. That is off from the previous test by 2.6 gigaflops or almost 1.275%. In the IDA benchmark, our scores are 4.34 GBPS read, 2.39 GBPS write and 77.3 nanosecond latency. That is a staggering 23.8%, 25% and 17.5% gain. Wow! Okay, we are at 3200 MHz now. Still, I didn't have to touch the timings. I increase the voltage to 1.25V just to play the safe way. Voltage is the most sensitive field when it comes to overclocking anything. If you apply high voltage, pop goes your load or RAM in this case. Run Typhoon Burner and search Google by the part number of your RAM. Then open up Datasheets 360. And from the Show More tab, check the minimum and maximum voltages supported by your particular RAM modules. For me, it is 1.26V. It might be different for your RAM sticks. Several modules have reported to go as high as 1.6 volts. So it depends on which kit you pick up. Okay, coming back, time for more benchmarks and some twists. IDA runs all fine. We get a small bump up to 4.57 GBPS reads and latency falls to 75.6 nanoseconds. It reports just fine. Let's turn to Linpack now. The performance straight on ground drops to 199.3 GFLOPs. And not only that, the system failed to maintain stability and it resulted in a test crash. Thus we can conclude that IDA is inefficient. The same is the case with Geekbench 3. I also made a test for 3066 Mbps. The performance drops from around 207 GFLOPs to 206.8 GFLOPs. It is past the point of diminishing returns. I will try 3333 MHz next. And at this point, it is just a game of hitting how high a frequency you can and forget about system stability and performance gains and stuff like that. And it boot loose? No, <laughs> no. There we go. <laughs> just, just, just stop it. Okay, it booted up and we are in the default BIOS settings again. Let's loosen the timings pretty quick. I'm going for CL 17, um, 17, 17, 39. Okay, let's try. Boot loop again. No, stop this. The ambient temperature is at 25.8 degrees and it's time for some CL 18, 18, 18, 41. Nah, no luck. Let's give a CL 19, 19, 19, 43 for one last time. No, this just won't work. <laughs> Okay, it seems like that day was bad. I was able to hit 3333 MHz finally, but off camera. Obviously, the setup was a bit more extreme with lower ambience and stuff like that. I will leave the CPUC validation link down in the description so you can go and check it out. But I couldn't get to 3400 Mbps and I have two chief suspects for that. First, the very low voltage offset on these modules might have been the issue, like it just goes up to 1.26 volts and that is pretty low. Many memory modules go up to 1.6 volt these days and my guess is that if I could have increased the voltage on this thing more, I would have hit 3400 Mbps, probably. Secondly, I think a motherboard is acting as a bottleneck at this point. Although a memory offset of 933 Mbps is extremely impressive, I think we have reached the saturation point of this motherboard's overclocking potential. Overall, the overclocking experience on the B450 Steel Legend wasn't bad. The motherboard auto resets to default settings after a certain number of boot failures which we can specify in the BIOS. So you don't have to go in and clear the CMOS every time you apply an overkill setting. The first thing that you must do with any RAM stick is enabling XMP. Like, why not? It is like a free upgrade to your RAM sticks. If you want to know more about XMP, click on the video here. You will be surprised to know about its benefits. Don't forget to like the video and I hope to see you again in the next video.